Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. We are looking at finding lost plugins and effects. Yes. Yes. Nice. Figuring out what's going on right. when there's a Yeah, you open effect. up a project somewhere on another computer and it, Final Cut doesn't tell you all this. It just gives you the missing effect, missing yes. plugin. You don't know which one. Yeah, exactly. So and that's, that's exactly the scenario. Either you, you open a project that you did a year ago uh -huh. or somebody gave you a project or you moved it to a different machine and this happens. So let's just take a look here. And <laughs> this happens. I so like that. So I, I have a project here which is actually a teaser video for our Warp Speed Motion 3D tutorial. And it's got lots of different um, effects in here. Some of our own plugins, some other people's plugins, all kind of stuff. Plugs, all kind of stuff. Um, and I'm scroll, scrubbing along, and I come to this, uh, and like, <laughs> okay, what the heck do I do about that? And the right. thing is, if I if I select that clip, we can see the thumbnail is fine, right? The thumbnail is fine. Yeah. Shift F to reveal in the browser, um, and it's fine in the browser. Sometimes I have to do Shift F twice to really locate it. There it is. Okay, so like, wait, what's going on? The clip's there, why does it say that? So one way to, to deal with this is you look in the inspector, uh, and here in the video tab it says effects. Oh, there's an effect called gradient blur. What the heck is that? Right. So if I turn it off, hey, we're back in I business. get it back. Yeah, oh, okay, so there's, there's some effect there that's missing. Right. Now, if you use FX Factory, um, this is never an issue because it manages them all for you. But if you have, uh, plugins from third parties, or you've made your own, maybe you didn't leave them in the right path, or you right. didn't give them, put them on the other machine. Right. So it, it becomes a detective process to figure out what's going on. And there's a product that helps you deal with this. And that's Yay. the purpose of today, is to show the product that helps you figure out what's going on. So in order to get there, you need an XML of your project. So from the file menu, I'm gonna choose to export XML. That's an event XML, right? It's in a, it's a, um, it's of this project. Okay. So, I didn't see select the project, that's why I Okay, asked. so maybe I should select a project. Um, select a project, file, export XML. It should be the project. You can yeah, do it on an event right. too, but I really right. need to be the project, so thank you. So I'm gonna export X XML, and then while that's doing that, the product I wanna talk about is called XFX Handler. <laughs> Say that 10 times fast. It's a free product. Let me show you the website that it comes from. It's sferico.com, it's Andreas Keel, Andreas, I hope I'm saying your name right, but he makes a lot of nice little, really useful tools. And this is a donationware product, which I, I suggest you donate to because it's really useful, it can save your bacon. So it brings up this interface, and this, this product does many different things. I'm just focused on one particular little thing it does here. But what I'm gonna do is choose Open FCP XML, navigate to that XML I exported and click Choose, and it lists in that particular project, all of the different um, effects that were used. So we can see uh, there's a name to them, uh, there's a transition, there's the number of times they appear, so there's 16 crossfades. Um, it tells you also whether they're external or internal. So internal means built into Final Cut and mm -hmm. external means another party. So we can go to this uh, type menu and, sorry, go to the location and say, I just wanna see the external ones. And right there, see it says false, Yes. gradient blur. False, in other words, I can't find it. Right, it's not there. So, but it gives me a little more information. Here's the path it's expecting. And the path says effects.localized. So this is the effects folder within the motion templates mm -hmm. folder. And then it says NAB 2016. And for me, that's like, oh, that's right. I made this for, for NAB and I must have moved it somewhere else. So it gives me some help to figure out where to find it. Because your, your two options are to get the thing installed working again or get rid of it. Or get rid of it, that's, that's right? it, right? Yeah. So here, within, within Final Cut, you could go through every single effect and turn them off, or with this app, you can just say, remove or disable, right here, okay? And then you're gonna end up re-importing the XML, I suppose. Exactly, so I just wanna show that works. So you can see this one is enabled. I'm just gonna choose, uh, I'm gonna choose remove selected, and then I don't need to do anything else. Doing that alone, modify the XML. It did? Yes, okay, just well doing that, that. that's nothing else. Pretty neat. It's some important you need to know. Okay. So from there, what I'll do is go back to Final Cut and choose File, Import XML, and select the same exact file, and it'll bring it in as a entirely separate event here. Okay, it's done. There you go. So I'm getting a little warning and I'm just gonna ignore that because I like 
your advice if you see a warning with a lot of things Words, you can't understand. Stand, just click OK. Yeah, click OK. It. Right. <laughs> so see it says teaser two. So it brought in a completely separate event and the event just contains one item, which is the project. So I'll double click to open it. And if we go over there, uh, sure enough, that effect's been removed and I'm back in business. So one way to deal with this, if you've got some effects that you don't really need, you can just blow them all away right away. Uh, but you can also use XFX Handler to help you figure out where those things are. I'll mention one more thing about that because um, people think of where effects are located. You know, where do you usually think that all these are located? In the movies. Movies and then motion templates. motion templates, right? Right. But there's another location that um, some developers will place their effects. So if I go to, um, I'm going to go to library, but I actually need to be at the root library. So I'm going to go to the very root and go to um, this drive to library and application support and Final Cut Pro. And there are templates here. So you can hear this is where SliceX and TrackX live, for example. Well, they want it to be there, so, so it's not user It's for every specific. user. It's for every user, yeah. Right. So that's just one trick is where are those things really located. Um, but I find this a great little app, free donationware, to figure out and help you sleuth out uh, what you did. Where did you put your Especially effects? Especially if you haven't opened the project in whatever, right. months later, like, what the heck? Why? It happens fact, all the time to us. I open up this offline. What the heck? All the time. And in fact, I even keep a sep separate folder of moved motion templates because I don't want them showing up and everything. And it's like, oh, that's, I know where it is. Right. And you can grab it or search on it. All right. So that's, 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 that's a really helpful one. All Good. right. Awesome. So there you go. You've just been given a means and a method to locate and track down your missing effects. missing effects. Thank you. <laughs> Titles, transitions, right, whatever. Trans and whatever. Whatever you have. So thanks for watching MacBreak Studio. Check us out the usual social media locations. I'm, I'm actually pointing to the info section in YouTube. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you again on the next episode of MacBreak Studio.